Al Gould lives in Newton, and he is a musical composer, an arranger, a teacher, a session player, an engineer, a performer, and more. Al stated that at the beginning, music pulled him in right away, and there was never any question that he wanted to make it, he wanted to create it, he wanted to steep himself in it. And consequently, he has worked in a great variety of venues in many uh, eclectic ways. Uh, a good deal of Al's work involves providing ongoing therapeutic music for a number of healthcare facilities in Massachusetts. Also, in a professional career spanning 40 years, Al has been privileged to work with Stephen Stills, Tom Paxton, Tom Rush, Ben Vereen, Peter Rowan, and for President Bill Clinton. And Al states that one of his most memorable moments sharing his music was when he was sitting next to Stephen Stills in a control booth at Criteria Studios in Miami and listening to the tracks that he had just recorded on Stephen's song. He currently performs and teaches in Greater Boston where he also composes and records in his home studio. And when he's not out performing on stage or in a medical or healing facility, uh, he might also be working on his first CD. And when I asked Al why share our art of poetry, story, and song with community, Al stated, music is the bridge to the spiritual dimension that people are in such dire need of. And so here to share a small sample of the many ways that Al makes music, please uh, give him a warm hand as he begins to share some music today with us. I love the work that I do daily, but it really has very little to do with the music that I'm about to present. Uh, but I would like to say that the music that I want to do today does talk about healing and th the therapeutic aspect of not just music, but living. I make people want to hide from me yeah. You cannot hide from me I am winter rising on the wind I am whiskers on that young man's winter chin I make people want to hide from me You cannot hide from me Trapped between the mountains Where the wind and water go Caught within the valley Where the wind and water blow So cold so cruel, so sweet to dream the dreams that lovers know. The mountains blow the thoughts around, the valleys catch the blow, the houses with the people. Our mirrors to the mountain Keeping secrets Trading smiles And remembering Remembering All those miles
Thanks so much. My next song is uh, a little bit of an enigma to me as well, uh, as it may well be to you. Uh, it's got a different kind of a title. Um, I didn't quite know what to call it, but um, it's sort of a, a tone poem for solo violin. Um, I can imagine a symphony string section playing this material, and uh, maybe someday I'll have the opportunity, and someday soon, to record this in the studio. I have a studio at home, and um, I'm sort of like the uh, shoemaker whose kids don't have any shoes. <laughs> just so busy that I don't seem to find the time to, to really spend a lot of time in the studio, but that's going to change coming up. And uh, perhaps I'll sit there and record all 144 string parts, <laughs> one at a time. This is called Hush, My Little Parallelogram. Thank you so much. I didn't want to be left out of the poetry aspect of this event, so uh, I do have a small book of poetry that I'm planning on publishing coming up, and I'd like to recite at least one short poem. Um, it's about uh, striving to get wherever we, we want to get in life, and uh, I think that's the general theme. It's called Pike of Peak. I strove to top a pike of peak that was a mountain on the road, but gaining ground I near gave up when petrificious fears collode. Do you men think it shameful that the somewhat doubt in me erode? Yet I do not. I've always held a tenuous grip on Netherland, but not about to stop or hold for sanctity of moral ground and gained in going past the stop, deep to a place that I conceived. I must now go. In going forth, I lose that moral pound. So must you stay, and off I climb, to places where the heights are hot. I'm talking tall, beyond the rhyme, into a pike of peak, or not. I just started to record this song in the studio, but I've performed it very little. And uh, it's one of my favorite songs. I wrote it long ago. But it's interesting that a song sometimes takes a lifetime to bring to fruition. This is called Here on Earth.
on earth And we sing tonight As we watch The pale moon man Watching us We're afraid that you might care to Let us know that we're being foolish So let us sing, yeah We'll deny most everything Alas, I was a man at birth, but now I am a full-grown child, isn't it? Ain't it weird how such things happen? Oh, well, I'm upside down. Oh, I shaved off my beard. Yeah, I cut myself, oh, I lost my strength, oh, 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 oh,
Thank you so much. Uh, we have time for one more song, I think, and uh, I want to reiterate how grateful I am to be here. What a great opportunity. Um, uh, the wonderful Boston Globe feature that mentioned this event, and also to once again thank Raphael and Elisa, and uh, most especially Cheryl, for hosting this event and giving me the opportunity to be here. I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Uh, this last song of mine is called All There Is to Keep. And I think it talks about how grateful we are for the, the things that we do have. And uh, I think realizing it while we're here is pretty important sometimes. We tried, tried to reason home. You tried, tried to go along. Memories of the shadow trees. We don't want to be all alone. Turning in the cave, we have things that we must see. We have times that we can't read road signs, and we might lose our way. It gives us pause to think of all we've said and all we have done well. It gives us room to stretch and room to see the trees that we have to fell. The rocking, the rocking bay to sleep keeping all there is to keep I'll keep you that is what I will do and you'll keep you'll keep me too As I reflect on my life I'm so glad, glad that you're my wife Lifelong plan, I will be your good man Through all things, I'm your man it's on and on and on and on we go to our place in the sun. It's on and on and on and on we go till we become someone. It's on and on and on and on we go to our place in the sun It's on and on and on and on we go till we become someone Thank you so much. Marble Arrow thunders home dead center in a country's heart. Two nightmare-colored triangles that almost made one nation under God ask why the shaft gyrated slowly through its conscience. 
In articulate reply, the list of names elongates without pity or regret. A flat final statement, our western wailing wall, washed day by day with fresh old tears, baptismal covenant with the blood-stained land we tried to free before it launched this mortal dart. Other monuments are raised to view. The Vietnam Memorial lies nearly hidden in the ground. Like the war, your perspective on it changes when it points away from you. It is no casual tourist stop. Watch who comes to sightsee. Old couples clinging search for sons. Women married now to someone else trace names of former lovers, husbands, schoolmates, or their brothers. Men, too, though not so young these days as when they conscientiously flew east to keep the West the way it was and is. They look and look, these men. Some walk. Some swing with practiced rhythm on worn crutches. Some flex shoulder muscles built by turning wheels that drive their chairs. Without warning, one will turn and wretch with sobs not liberated since the war. His wife draws him to her breast, helpless too. And then there are the kids. We'll never go to war again, of course. That's why we have to keep this nation strong with another arrow ready to take flight. And the B-2 bomber's aim is true, its range long. In Vietnam, the green rice grass grows taller than before made strong by soldiers underground, by all those chiseled names embarked upon their final tour of duty. War is never over, only under, like a soldier in a new plowed field, like an arrowhead beneath the skin, like the earthbound monument in Washington, D.C. All my fingers were cold and the snow was piled deep when I went out to start up my car. It was yellow and cozy and ever so cute. In the past, it had carried me far. But my car wouldn't start and my lateness noomed large as I worried about my poor class, which was waiting in vain for their teacher to come so I'd help them with English and math. As my very first class, they'd all made me at home, though the room, it was cramped and so small. All the shelves were filled up with those giant red books, which were printed so firmly in Braille. When at last AAA had appeared and gave help, I was ready to drive through the street, but I feared what I'd face when I parked my small car near the sixth grade just off of the street. As I shut the car door and I flew down the path, I could see kids come out in the snow, bundled up in their jackets, wore mittens and hats, but unsure about where they should go. There was Tommy in front who'd move fast through the door, smiling Bonnie, and Jerry so bold, though not one of the six caught a glimpse of their path. They were searching for me in the cold. Now their faith touched me deep such a long time ago, for love's trust gives a wonderful lift. So whenever I think of that very first class, I am left with a heart-mending gift. Leaves, they die and lie on the ground. They tumble and crumble to dust. They must break down to become tiny parts to replenish the whole, fertilizer. Evergreen needles endure for sure. They remain the same throughout the year, staying green throughout the cold and snow, letting you know that with life's experiences, some you must let go. Let them break down and disintegrate, tiny parts becoming fertilizer for the greater whole. But other experiences endure. They're steady and sure, content lifelong. And it's these experiences we celebrate at winter solstice time, the constant essence experience of life, evergreen. Peach and pear, apple. 
Then this 